The other day I was watching this Pomplamoose music video and was intrigued by the projection techniques. Come to find out this is a technique called projection mapping that's used in a lot of really cool looking promotional stunts. Let's see how they do it and let's find out what it takes to make our own projection maps. If you get any value from these videos and would like to give some value back, please consider donating to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash tinkernut. If you've ever been to a movie theater, then you're familiar with the concept of projection, which essentially uses light to cast transparent video and images onto a flat surface. What projection mapping does is instead of using a flat surface, it uses irregular sized shapes to project videos and images onto, giving a really unique effect. So here's the minimum of what it will take to achieve this effect yourself. A projector, a computer that can connect to that projector, and some light colored objects to project onto. Okay, let's first look at the projector. If you don't have a projector, don't think that you can't do this project. Here's some options for you. If you want to just bite the bullet and purchase one, you can find some cheap $60 projectors on Amazon. That's the route I decided to go. If that's too much of an investment, then you can watch my tutorial for making your own projector using old recycled electronics. And if that's still too much, then the King of Random has a method of making a projector using $5 worth of parts. The next thing you need is something to project onto. You want to use something light colored so that it can reflect more of the light back. I'm just using white foam board that I cut into desired shapes. To get the most out of this effect, you want to use something with distinct edges, such as boxes, with an edge angled towards the camera. The last piece of this puzzle is a computer and software. The type of computer depends on the software that you decide to use. You can find software for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even iOS. But if you're cheap like me, you'll want to use VPT, a fully functional projection mapping tool for Windows and Mac. At this point, the last thing to do is to use the software to set up our scene. The VPT website has a great beginner's guide tutorial for using the software, so follow that guide if you want more thorough instructions. But here's a quick run through. Once the software is installed and you have it launched, you should see three windows, the video projection tool, preview, and output. If you have your projector plugged in and it's set to extend your computer display, the output window will automatically show through the projector. To make it full screen, just click the full screen button here. Clicking this plus sign adds a new layer. Then to add a new element to the layer, decide whether you want it to be a webcam, a solid, a mix, or a video image element, and then switch it on. Assuming that you have QuickTime installed on your computer, you can drag an image or video to that element. Next, set your layer to show the element, and then you should see it through the projector. In the preview window, you can drag the corners of the layer until they're aligned with your object. Then you can use these tools to tweak the positioning and scale as well as the tint and opacity. If your object has edges that the image needs to bend around, you can click on the mesh tool and warp the image around those edges. Once you've got it the way you want it, click the plus sign again to add a second layer. Use the slider on the left to slide the layer in front of or behind layer 1. Then choose which element you want to add to the layer and add it. Now align it to the next object on your scene. To make it easier, you can click the solo button to isolate that layer while you're working on it. Repeat this for however many layers you want to add. When you're finished, you can store this layer set by giving it a number and a preset name, then click store. Now you can create a whole new set of elements for each layer and store that as a different preset. And then you can repeat this for however many sets that you want for your project. That's the basics to get you started and that should be enough for you to tell a story through projection mapping. If you create anything cool, please share it with us in the comments below and you may be featured on my next comment show. Alright, click here to watch the previous tutorial and comment show and don't forget to show your support by donating to Patreon or subscribing to my YouTube, Google Plus, or Twitter pages. And for more, go to Tinkernut.com 
where technology and creativity collide.